Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video I will talk about the story of these little parts and how the snap maker made it happen. When I finished the top drawer of my display cases in the latter part of last year, I was faced with a challenge. The challenge was how to display the writing instruments in their new dedicated space. I couldn't lay them flat on the surface as any movement will make them roll over the place as you can see right now in this demonstration. Even though the existing display is quite functional, I didn't want to use it for several reasons. Number one, I needed a fresh look. Uh, these have been in use for at least four years and they make look everything so lined up and so straight. It's kind of like an army parade. Also, the cases are much smaller than the actual drawer, so there will be a lot of unused real estate. I could fill it up with an extra product, but it's still not the look I was going for. Lastly, pricing the items is not possible unless I use some sort of stickers, which I didn't want to do either. I started thinking of a way to overcome all those challenges, and what I thought about was an angled display, and the parts of that display would easily accommodate a price tag. I started prototyping, and since I'm a wood shop, the first thing that I prototyped with was wood. Well, plywood to be exact. The design gave me what I needed, the angle, and the ability for the pen holders to get joined so that I can get small groupings, like a pen and a pencil set, or a fountain and a rollerball pens. But the manufacturing wouldn't be easy. I need about 160 of those tiny little parts. And with tiny little parts and large unforgiving tools, there is basically two things that can happen. Number one, the part can break. Number two, I can lose a finger or two, and that's a lot more devastating. So, I thought about 3D printing. I transferred the main design into my CAD software and I came up with a couple of ideas that way. The drawing that you see here is the, basically the evolution of the design. The original part design was a single piece design and there were two versions of it. One was a replica of my wooden parts and the second involved the extension where the price tag would sit. I contacted a few 3D printing businesses in the area. Because of the single piece design and the fact that the joining portion is slightly elevated, the 3D printing would have been quite pricey and also time consuming. Then I went back to the original wood design where the two parts were joined by a metal rod. It happened that right at around that time I was looking at the Snapmaker 2.0. Uh, it has the features that I needed, the 3D printing module, the laser burn module and the CNC module. So I thought if I have it, I would be able to do my display but also expand my business operations, for example, offering engravings on the various items that I have. Once I got the snap maker, I started printing the 3D parts. Of course, there is always the learning curve as to how to 3D print, what settings are best, whether I should do a solid piece versus a hollow piece. But it was a proof of concept and that was the most important thing. Then the muse came again to improve the design. Instead of the thick metal rod, now all the parts are joined by a small diameter metal rod, either brass or stainless steel. This not only gives a cleaner and consistent look, but it also allowed for the parts to be slightly smaller, which reduces the printing time and materials used. Now it's time to print those in large quantities. 3D printing is a slow process. For example, for the set of three, it took about three hours from start to finish. The actual video that you see right now is sped up about 200 times and the three hours are condensed into roughly one minute. Doing some math now, uh, for the set of 160 that I need at three hours a set, that would be roughly 480 hours or 20 days if I run the machine 24-7 non-stop. But to be on the safe side, I'm going to budget 40 days for the print and also do a little bit of prioritization as to what gets printed first versus what gets printed second. Uh, for example, I immediately need the front and the back holder, but the cap holder can wait in round two, for example. And this is the story of the little Lego-like parts. In my next Snapmaker video, I will turn shop waste into something useful using the Snapmaker 2.0. Make sure you like, share and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos.